Hi, I'm Robert Doyle, the Fraud Prevention Coordinator for Liberty Bank, and today we examine misrepresentation scams. Why are they called misrepresentation? Because the scammers misrepresent themselves, saying they're from a trusted bank or company that you do business with. Their goal is to steal your personal information and take over your accounts and identity. We're joined by Denise, who can tell you a little more about the most common misrepresentation scams. Thanks, Robert. There are three primary types of misrepresentation scams. All are designed to separate you from your money, and this crime is on the rise. You may have encountered one of these in the last few months. Phishing is the most common scam and can happen through a phone call or an email. With a phishing phone call, the person calling you will typically say that they are with your bank or credit card company and need you to verify your account and personal information over the phone. With a phishing email scam, you'll receive a fake email from a bank or company telling you that there is a problem with your account and will ask you to verify your personal information by clicking on a link within the email. Don't do it. The link actually leads to a fake website designed to look identical to the real website. Occasionally, the bogus emails are easy to identify as a scam. However, some are very realistic. An easy way to tell if it's a scam email is to move your mouse over the link and see the true address of that link or at the bottom of your browser. When that address doesn't match the message, it's a scam. Don't respond and delete the email. We encourage you to never click on any links and emails that request personal information. Instead, go directly to the company's website to check on your account, or call directly using a phone number that you know is real. Some banks now offer mobile banking, which notifies a customer of his or her account activity by a text message sent from the bank. Since many banks do not offer texting services and rarely would contact their customer with a text message, you should be concerned if you get such a message. These fraudulent texts are called smishing. The fake text message implies a problem with your account and asks you to call a bogus phone number provided. Calling that number puts you in contact with a thief who is ready to collect your information. Have you ever received an automated phone call reminding you of a doctor's appointment? Those are computer-generated phone calls using a system called VoIP and can be used for several purposes. A scam called vishing utilizes this method to call a large number of households saying there is a problem with your account. The scam asks you to call a phone number provided on the message. Of course, the phone number leads you directly to the scammer who is ready and willing to take your personal information and steal your money and identity. How to avoid being the victim of vishing? Call the company or bank directly using a valid phone number to find out if there is a problem. Robert? Thanks for the great information. With each method, whether it's phishing, smishing, or vishing, the only way to protect yourself is to never give any information over the phone or through emails. Never call any phone number that's provided to you. Always look up a real phone number in the phone book or from their website directly. Scammers can easily take advantage of you if you give them your personal or account information. Thank you for watching. Feel free to visit our website, bankliberty.com, for other educational videos and examples of phishing emails that our employees have received so you'll know what to look for to protect yourself. Remember, it's your money. Make the most of it.